Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Reverend Rich, and as always, I am glad for you to be here with us in our spiritual community. And I hope you're tapping into our other shows, such as Wisdom Wednesdays and Meditation Mondays. But today with my co-host, Alicia Pacheco, my daughter, we're going to go ahead and introduce a new topic. It is called Tea Time Truth Talk. And what it is, is a chance to ask questions or have situations that you're unsure how the answer should go. And we will be here and discussing different conversate with different conversations, such as uh, relationship situations or emotional or mental situations or just regular conversations in general. Um, the way it started was the fact that I am a college student at LCCC. I am a Reiki one, soon to be a Reiki practitioner. I am a wedding singer and a soon to be life coach. And one of the things I learned when I was in high school was that a lot of people came to me asking for advice on many different topics and situations. And I would give them advice to the best of my abilities or what I felt was a great way for them to use it for their daily lives or again, situations or certain problems they had. And I figured this way, this would be a great way for people who I can't connect with in person to answer any questions or problems or things like that for them to help them and better themselves in whatever they need to be. And when she brought this idea to me, what it made me reminded, uh, what reminded me of was a show that Wayne Dyer once had called as a spiritual solution for every problem. It was a PBS special. And I said, well, what better way to reach out to those who are in her age demographic and get to know that? So with that being said, just before we move on, we call this T. So for us older folks, why don't you explain to them what exactly is T? No problem. Trust me, I've had that comment all the time where I'll say, oh, yeah, I'm spelling tea. And people will literally think I spelled like a pot or a cup of tea. No, it's a my generation and future generations slang for gossip or drama in the, in our case. So it's pretty much we'll talk about boy problems or a failed grade or things like that. And our saying is we're spelling the tea, we're telling you the gossip or what's in the in now. And then by saying tea, we, I usually give advice or whatever based off whatever tea we're spelling. So with that, you know, we wanted to come together with an additional show that is geared toward exactly that, especially in our youth and in, in unity. We call them NGUs or Next Generation Unity uh, in our YOUs, which is our older teens, to have a place where they can still get a perspective from a spiritual standpoint or from a metaphysical standpoint of the problems they're addressing and how they can address it. And my daughter also be have grown up in unity knows these principles and we can both relate to that age demographics so even though we're talking about her age demographics realize that this show is also good for adults as well as even the younger because we're going to be discussing things that you know me being born in the 70s raised in the 80s you know there are kids now thinking of things that we wouldn't even have thought of back then so this show is good for everyone. So don't let the fact that we talked about it originated with one age demographic stop you from listening and even putting this um, information into practice. So with that being said, we figured let's take a light subject today just because we're introducing ourselves. And again, just for your record, we will be dropping a new episode every Tuesday. So you've got Monday meditation, Tuesday tea, and then Wednesday Wisdom. <laughs> so, uh, and again, it's to make it lighthearted and fun. So please join us as always. And in the future, I mean, my daughter will be bringing the topics of discussion as she will be leading this with me. But, you know, if you ever feel that you have a question you want answered on this show, we do have an email address and you can always comment on the YouTube channel. And we'll try to address every question as we can. Because again, we don't want to limit this just to our area. We want to make sure that everyone has a platform. So if you want to go ahead. Absolutely. Um, I actually had uh, this question come up to me recently due to a situation that my friend was having. And she was asking me if her feelings were valid. So her situ situation went like this. 
Um, so when I express my feelings to people, they think I'm overreacting. And uh, every time I try to express my feelings to them, they make me feel stupid or I need to get over it. But let it be anyone else's issue or problem and I'm there to help them feel better or whatever. It just seems like everyone's feelings are more important but not mine. And I'm typically not the type to express how I feel all the time, but when I do, people tell me I'm overreacting. My question is, are they right that I'm overreacting or am I allowed to express my feelings? Well, actually, in that, there's actually a three-point answer to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if... And I know there will be people listening to this and watching this and go, well, Rich, why are you blaming the person who's asking the question? I'm not. One of the biggest teachings in unity is radical self-responsibility because we all have a part in what's going on. So the first thing we talk about is the people who are, uh, she sees judging her or he sees judging her is perspective. And what I have learned is that perspective is personal. And what I mean by that is that where... I, you may have a problem and your perspective of that problem is where you may think your problem is worse than somebody else's. And it may or may not be. That's only the perspective of the person. So for me, when somebody judges that and says, oh, just get over it, it's because they think that your problem is not as big as theirs. So when now, when they hit, which is answer number two, in Unity we have our four-part consciousness level and the first one is victim now again it is not limited to unity because we hear the victim mentality in many talks Absolutely. you know i love lisa nichols who says that it's okay to visit victimhood every so often but it's not a great place to stay but we do find ourselves that people love to be in that victim mentality because it brings them attention it brings them a feeling of i'm important so everybody look at me is it a good or bad thing? No, because we all visit it every so often. We feel that something's going on in our life, something's happening, and we want to go there. Final answer is around the emotional part. Is my, my feelings valid? Yes, your feelings are valid because they are your feelings. You know, they your perspective says right now, this is how I'm feeling. This is my emotion. This is my fear. This is my sadness. This is my depression. This is my whatever. And in unity, we say it all the time. You've got to grow through it. You've got to go through it. You've got to understand what's triggering it. Because at the end of the day, as I always say, we have no control over anybody else but ourselves. So when we use that self-radical responsibility and say, okay, my friends act this way when I'm in need, but they act this way when they're in need because their perspectives are different. So we have to, one, understand perspective is personal. This is how they see themselves. I can't control that. No one can. You can only control yourself. So you, in turn, can say, okay, they're in victim mentality because they feel that their needs or their emotions or whatever are more valid than mine, and that's okay. That's for them. For me now, as I'm going through my thing, we grow through it. We Okay, why do I feel this way? Why do I have these triggers? What's triggering me to feel this way? Sharing my own perspective, and I say this constantly, and I use <clears throat> this as an example. I mean, I'm a 51-year-old man, you know, so half a century of experience, you know. But you got to understand that there are times that people may do or not do something may say or not say something, and all of a sudden, I'm super angry. And I'm like, well, what's going on? Well, it's because there's a trigger. Now, nine times out of 10, I'm not really angry at this situation. It's something inside of me. And that's what we need to work on. Because if your friends can say something and you immediately drop somewhere, why? What's triggering that? What happened in your past? And that's what you want to work on. There is no right or wrong. It's just a situation in that moment that you need to look at your perspective and understand that they're looking from their perspective, but the only person you can control is you. So don't let anyone ever tell you that your feelings are not validated. All they can say is, and if I was talking to someone like that, I'd ask them, why do you feel that way? And then help them move through it. Maybe help them identify the trigger. But even after that, at the end of the day, I can't do it for them. They have to work on it. You know, I am also a certified life coach, and I know that because we can give everybody the assignment, we can coach them to a better life, but they have to do the work, and that's what's important. 
So to answer that question, move out of victimhood. <laughs> Remember that perspective is personal. So only your perspective right now is important to you. And then finally, grow through your emotions. Nobody says stop. Don't feel the way you do. Just know that it's a temporary situation and you can grow right through it. So then my next question would be, what do we do with those friends? Because again, in high school and in college or ever, or even in adulthood, heck, <laughs> I've heard conversations about that too, where it's... Um, so this is a continuation of your feelings aren't valid. Are those truly the type of friends do you want in your life? Is that something that you should now take a step and say, I'm leaving that group or leaving that certain friend? Or is it something where it's just like you let it go and just never tell them how you feel? Well, that again, it, that goes into a metaphysical place because it's easy to say, well, you know, Jesus said, forgive seven times 70. Or... If someone strikes your right left cheek, turn the other cheek. And it's not, how do I say, it, in both those situations, it's not the literal. It's more of, this person did you wrong. Stop focusing on that. Focus on the good he did. So in that case, you have to make that decision for yourself if that person is worth that. Now I can take you into the metaphysical, which is the energy part of things. You know, we you just became a Reiki practitioner one. And you understand energy and you are attuned and you understand how you feel different now that you're more open. You're more receptive to this. You've always been empathic. You've always felt the energy like I do. So you will find yourself in situations now where some of your friends may be, and I hate to use the term, toxic. Because they're so needy for you, but they're not willing to do the same thing now. We give without the intent of receiving, except, you know, through the law of receiving and giving, where we say we expect, but we also understand that it doesn't always come back in the way we think it's going to come back. So your energy will tell you whether this person is worth your time or not. Again, time is something for me that I can't get back. No matter what we think about time being an illusion or whatever, Time is something I can never get back. So if I'm going to spend my energy or spend my time with someone, then yes, there are certain things that I feel should be, you know, be able to be reciprocated back and forth if that person truly cares. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to push everybody away either. You know, if somebody hasn't spoken to you in two years and comes to you, you go into your heart and say, am I going to help this person? But I also understand I'm not going to attach myself to that person. Mm -hmm. I've had, again, using experience, I've had people in my past and my wife had to help me realize that when I needed to help people, it was a need in myself because I felt lacking as if I wasn't good enough. I would go back and forth and hold on to these people, even though all they did was just enough to say, yeah, I helped you, but they would need and need and need. And as I continued to grow through the spiritual path, I became a person that now I'm super busy. Anybody who knows me knows, you know, I love my ministerial work. I love my coaching work. I love my Reiki work. But if I took the timeline, you would see that I probably have no time for myself. So person comes and says, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, OK, and I give them time, but then it becomes they think that it's okay to go back to the past where it's like, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you now. I had one person contact me. We had some great conversations. He told me about a passing in his family. And I happened to be at Sunday service. And at that time, I was the sound person because I wasn't speaking that Sunday. And he messaged me and got mad because I couldn't talk to him. And I'm like, I'm behind a big mixing board right now in the middle of a service. I had another person do the same thing. I was actually working. I was working from home that day because it was the start of COVID. And he messaged me and he wanted to talk, but I was dealing with, you know, the job at that point. And he got mad and felt, and the comment he made was, oh, you think you're too good for me now? You're just too good because of what? And I had to literally not allow it to trigger me, but to just turn it off. And I left him with, I pray for you, I hope all goes well, and I block the messenger. And it wasn't anything intentional, but I understood that his energy and my energy right now could not be there. Now, when he deals with whatever it was that he felt, you know, was um, triggering him, mm -hmm. 
then I know we can continue our conversation and I'm hopefully guide him through wherever his problems were. But at the point of that, it had to be a toxic relationship of he needs, he needs, he needs. And all I want to do is talk about the negative and all I want to do is this and that. I couldn't allow that into my energy because then that'll drain me to help the people who genuinely want to work and work with themselves. So the question of the friends is exactly that. It's you would have to see for yourself whether being in that space at that moment is worth it or am I there because there's a comfort of I had these friends and they need to be around me. You know, leadership, they say, is one of the loneliest things. And I know that and people make fun of me because I'm not constantly surrounded by people. But I think that people are starting to understand yes. a little bit as to why I live the life I do. Okay. <laughs> I think that answered that question really well. <laughs> okay. So, again, thank you, Dad, Rich. We'll figure out the name title soon. <laughs> but <laughs> I hope that helped the situation and answered any of your questions. And again, we will be on YouTube. Uh, we'll be parts of um, definitely follow every, with every encounter because my videos will be on there as well. And follow his stuff for Wisdom Wednesday, Meditation Monday, as well as go on for Nairobi Naturals, which is my mother's business as well, who does essential oils and candles, which help you go through this as well. And with that, we say thank you. And, and if no one else has told you, we love you and there's nothing, nothing you, you can, can do, do about, about it. it. And we bid you namaste as the big, beautiful divinity in us sees the big and beautiful divinity in you. Thank you. <laughs>